think because I didn't really have many models for what bisexuality looked like, it really took years until I fully embraced my sexuality. You're listening to Being Bisexual on the BBC World Service. I actually found it quite hard to, to date and to find someone who was accepting and not only accepting, but who understood how bisexuality works. You know, there, there are people that are, are predominantly attracted to the same gender, and then there are people that are predominantly attracted to the opposite gender. There are people that are 50-50. So many permutations. Hello, I'm Nikki Hodgson. I'm a journalist and broadcaster in the UK, and I happen to also be bisexual. But for a long time, I didn't realise I was bisexual. It's taken until quite recently, I'm now 33, to fully understand and accept that I'm attracted to both men and women. In fact, I've never really talked to many bisexual people, or at least I don't think I have. Not many of us wear a large badge proclaiming our bisexuality. So in this programme, I'm going on a personal exploration in which I'll hear from other people with similar experiences around the world who are coping with their bisexuality often in the face of strong opposition and traditional views and values. To start my journey, I went along to a support group in Birmingham, in the heart of the UK. Bi meeting groups are few and far between, but the Brum Bi group has been going for about 10 years and they meet every month at a pub in the city centre. The people I'm meeting tonight are a cross-section of different ages, backgrounds and ethnicities with a wide range of bisexual experiences. All right, so my name's Dominic, I'm 28. Bisexuality to me is freedom to enjoy loving who you want to love. So if you come across someone that you like that's male, that's great. If they're female, that's great. If they're in between, even better. Like, it can be anyone. It doesn't matter. You fall in love with whoever you fall in love with. Hi, I'm Naomi, I'm 27. I identify as pansexual, biromantic, although I usually just tell people I'm bi. And what that means is I have the potential to be attracted to all genders or people regardless of their gender but I have a type when it comes to dating and tend not to date heterosexual men. My name is Archie, I'm 21. I feel like I'm constantly in crisis as an Asian man I have to kind of do like months of planning before I go out on a date. Which cinema should I take the guy or the girl to? You know I have to constantly plan my thoughts. I feel like a 40 year old woman having like a midlife crisis. And that's what I feel like constantly. <laughs> this is a great analogy. <laughs> um, do you ever wish that it was, you know, just easier for you to be gay or to be straight? I would love to be gay because I, a lot of people assume that I'm gay. They just, like, fill the stereotypes and say, he's a bit higher, and uh, that's what everyone assumes. But I think every sexuality has their burdens and curses and good things and bad things. Do you feel equally attracted to men and women? I think with me it's like because I was raised in a restricted community I'm still learning who I am Uh, I prefer women sometimes and my first time with a guy I was like what's that? Like why is why does he look funny? (laughs) (laughs) So when do bisexual people realise they're bisexual? Lewis Oakley a 25-year-old bisexual man living in London and Zachary Zane, a 26-year-old bi guy from New York, shared their stories with me. I realised when I was about 19 and I moved to London. For a lot of people in LGBT circles, they feel like that's really late. But I feel like from speaking to other bisexuals, that's actually a normal time to realise. If you think about it, gay people, obviously, when they were at school, say, were in the playground, the other boys would be like, you know, isn't she hot, isn't she hot? And having that kind of straight mentality forced on gay people from a young age made them realise, no, I don't think she is hot. So I think they realise it sooner. Whereas when I was at school and the boys would say, isn't she hot, I'd be like, yeah. I kept hooking up with guys time and time again. So I wasn't sure if I was gay or closeted, if I just was open sexually and didn't really care who that person was. I I wasn't sure what was going on at all because despite knowing I loved women, I kept having these fun, playful experiences with men despite telling myself that I really didn't enjoy it. It's very much you're either gay or straight. You've kissed a boy, you've had sex with a boy, you are gay. And it's kind of like, well, I'm not sure. So for a couple of years, I was kind of like, you know, looking into it if there were any guys I liked going for it but to the majority of people still appearing straight and then I met my boyfriend and we were together for two and a half years 
just because of society, I did think, well, I'm dating a boy, so I must be gay. And I remember being on the tube once and kind of looking at a girl opposite me and thinking, you know, she's actually really hot. And having that realization of like, actually, like, I'm not gay. Like, it doesn't define me that I'm kind of dating a man. It's irrelevant because I am bisexual. I'm attracted to both. I started seeing a therapist in Boston. I'm going in, I'm talking about my attractions to men, women, and various other genders. And I remember telling him, I'm so confused. I don't know what's going on. And he says, you you don't sound confused. You like men and women. That seems very clear to me. You're bisexual. And he said it so point blank. And I think hearing that from a mental health professional as opposed to a, a friend who maybe knows one bisexual guy uh, was very different. I think I needed that. Zach, it's really interesting that, you know, it took a while for you to have that aha moment and you needed the interjection of someone else. I took a long time to acknowledge that I was bisexual, to realise it. For a time, I thought I was lesbian. Then I thought I would, I'd had an experimentation period and that I'd gone back to being straight. And then I was probably in my mid-20s before I realised the same thing. Absolutely. That's a pretty common and something that we hear a lot, especially just because many of us didn't really think bisexuality existed. And when you grow up having the strong attraction to either men or women you're not exactly sure what this other attraction means. Realising you're bisexual in a largely binary-obsessed world is one thing. Dating people and telling them you're bisexual is another. But that's exactly what Vernon, who's 32 and from Johannesburg in South Africa, did. He's in a relationship with a woman, McLean, and recently told her he was bisexual. At first it was difficult, I have to say, but uh, we, we both worked through it. And through therapy and uh, through just lots of talking and uh, being there for each other, we managed to, to integrate you know, this, this into uh, my identity and our relationship. For McLean, Vernon coming out as bisexual did come as a bit of a shock. You know, what does this mean for our relationship and does it mean he's going to leave me? Does it mean we need to redefine the boundaries of our relationship? Initially, he assumed because he has an attraction to men, that must mean he's gay, regardless of the fact that he also has an attraction to women and that he also has an attraction to me. Um, But then as we worked through it and we both sought therapy, we both realized that, you know, he's actually identifies as bisexual and not gay. The whole experience has definitely led to a deepening of our relationship simply because it forced us to work on it. Vernon has set up the country's very first bisexual meetup group. People experience a tremendous amount of isolation. I'm grateful that I'm working on on this uh, and and, and integrating it into my life early in my 30s. But uh, there are people that are in their late 50s, uh, even older than that, that haven't come to grips with their sexuality. And uh, the only way that we're going to destigmatize bisexuality is by talking about it. June 2017, and Tel Aviv Pride is in full swing. It's one of the biggest LGBT festivals in the world. And, for the first time ever, the parade has a bisexual theme. It's rare for the B to be given such a major focus in an LGBT event. But everyone here is really behind the move. Zoe Soik, a 41-year-old lesbian woman who campaigns on LGBT rights in Israel, says bisexual people often feel ignored and sidelined in the LGBT community. They struggle for awareness and that people will not say, bisexual? There is no such a thing. You are a gay identity that you hide in yourself or you are a lesbian that you are not out loud. So there is, it exists, bisexual, it's identity. And we just need to, to show people the awareness of this community. Dr. Fat Alkoski is one of the organizers of Tel Aviv Pride. Four years ago, we decided to have a theme, and, uh, and the fact that we have a theme may, uh, became very interesting thing because it it's kind of helping helping us sort of focus in, drill down into our community. And uh, and this year, we we decided on bisexual. It really exposes this community as they feel like outsiders everywhere. There's quite a lot of bisexual out there, it seems, and, uh, you know, people who are not coming to the Pride, and, you know, so it uh, was very interesting, I think, in the way it sort of uh, integrated the, the straight community into the LGBT community, and uh, it's the only place that you celebrate difference. As well as a time for bisexual people to get down and party, 
This year's Tel Aviv Pride was also time to raise awareness of biphobia. There's a very big stigma. Um, it's either you're one or the other. You can't be both. If you are both, then you're just trying to play the field and you're going to wind up hurting people. Yeah, so my male counterparts are normally more erased and told that they're gay. And there is a little bit of tension in the bisexual community because women are accepted to be bisexual, but in the eyes of that, we appeal to men sexually. And that's not really representation. It's not really acceptance. It's just being used sexually for the straight male pleasure. Expressing your feelings or even just identifying as bisexual in a country like Iran presents itself with grave risks. Any same-sex liaisons there are punishable by death or long prison terms. But it hasn't stopped two bisexual Iranian women, now based in Europe, from reaching out to bisexuals living inside the country. Sudaran and her friend Zainab recently set up Dojenzgara.org. Dojenzgara is the Farsi term for bisexual, and the website is the first and so far only educational resource about bisexuality in the Farsi language. First of all, this is a super binary society, so it's there is no other gender than man or woman, there is no other sexuality than being straight. So being bisexual is seen exactly as you don't want to be seen because homosexuality is not seen as a sexual orientation either. That is a sickness and that is to be cured also. So once you have the choice to be homosexual or straight, then why do you want to be bisexual? And it took me actually 15 years to understand that bisexuality actually exists. What about bisexual men in Iran? Uh, when they say they're bisexual, they always categorize as gay people. So they're losing their manhood um, being gay. Why would you just lose your power of being a man because you're most valuable gender on the earth in that country? So with our experience, Iranian and Persian speaker um, bisexual men have more difficulty to come out as it comes to women. Like straight and gay relationships, bisexual relationships come in lots of different guises. In Sao Paulo in Brazil, we met Tui, a bisexual woman, and Zach and Biel, both bisexual men. They're all in their 20s and currently in a polyamorous relationship. Biel and I are together nearly six years. We met in a club near here. It was 6am and we were super drunk and since then we haven't been apart. Today we are married. It started in a club, started off as fun and became a serious relationship. I remember that when we met, we didn't know the sexuality of the other. We said, I'm bisexual. Oh, me too. It was an important moment and one of the strongest memories we have from the day we met. I met them last year. They'd been together for five years. I met Biel on Tinder. We met not for a relationship, just for friendship. Then, in the same club where they met, also drunk, I told them how much I liked them, and since then we've been in a six-month poly love relationship. Biel, Tui and Zach believe bisexuality is much more widespread in Brazil, but that people are scared to express themselves. In Brazil, there is this idea, especially by straight people, that really it's not a sexuality, that there's no love in bisexuality, just promiscuous sex. I've heard this from my mum, from my grandmother, from my friends over many years, that really I just want to participate in promiscuous sex and for this reason I'm bisexual. There are bisexual relationships that are monogamous, with partners that don't sleep with other people, that stay with one person, get married, and that's their life. Here in Brazil, people connect bisexuality with promiscuousness. Bisexuals end up keeping themselves to themselves because they know that they'll suffer a bit of prejudice from both sides. These are the main factors and the ones that leave me most upset. You know, I would like it if my sexuality was understood as a real sexuality. How bisexual people are treated by the gay or wider LGBT community is a perennial issue for bisexual rights campaigners around the world. One of my absolute bugbears is... LGBT groups that will put out research that will say something along the lines of X percent of gay and bisexual men are more likely to 
catch an STI. Lewis Oakley is a bisexual rights activist living in London. And it's like, you are supposed to be responsible here. This is your responsibility to be looking at this. You are looking at two people with completely different sex lives under the same microscope. I get in a lot of trouble for saying this, but I say it because I need to bring awareness to it. When I was single, I was religious about using condoms with men. With women, I was a bit more lax about it. And that is something that the research would never even look at because it's basically made for gay people. They just throw bisexuals in there to get the numbers and make it a bit more inclusive. And it's like, this is about people's sexual health. It's really, really serious. We put Lewis's arguments directly to a leading gay charity. I think there's a lot of reasons that bi people feel excluded from the LGBT community. Lily Huggins is from the LGBT Foundation based in Manchester in the UK. I mean, first of all, there's a historical precedent The word bisexual wasn't used as much. People would often identify as lesbian and gay. There's also a lack of research. And often we find a phenomenon known as lumpy data, which is where um, lesbian, gay and bisexual people are lumped in together. When what we actually see is that bi people fall down um, in terms of attainment and quality of life than their gay and straight peers. On top of that, there's community biphobia. And by that, I mean just biphobia you feel from other lesbian and gay people. There's often a phenomenon in the gay community where people will say they're bisexual before they eventually come out as gay. And unfortunately, that makes it a lot harder for people that are genuinely bisexual to come out. Ying Xing is the director of the LGBT Centre in Beijing. She's one of the very few bisexual people to head an LGBT organisation anywhere in the world. First year in the centre, uh, I had a boyfriend. And um, some people always ask me one question. I never saw you have a girlfriend. How could you say you're bisexual? I feel sad because themselves, they are LGBT activists. How could they... Ask this kind of question. But bisexual, we have this kind of issue. Yingxing says biphobia is still widespread, with many gay and lesbian people struggling to understand bisexuality. We did a bisexual event here, and there was a boy. He said, oh, I know I'm bisexual, but I'm not there to say I'm bisexual when I was in gay community. And I also, I'm not there to, to say that I'm a bisexual in the heterosexual people either, because I'm afraid I would be rejected by them. Bisexual still kind of marginalized um, by the whole community. It's like, you know, of course, gay men occupy most of resources, and uh, then is lesbian, and then is transgender. Um, we have this awareness that, oh, we should do more work on trans people. But for bi people, it's like, mm, what's the problem? Coming out to close family can be very difficult. Gay and lesbian people talk about it being the most important moment in their lives. For bisexual people, it can be just as challenging. My mum's known for some time that I'm attracted to both sexes, but I'm not sure she really gets what it means to be bisexual. So I took the opportunity to sit her down for a heart-to-heart over a cup of tea. So mum, I've come to talk to you today about what you really think about me identifying as bisexual. Not a problem, Nick, because I've known it for such a long time and you told me such a long time ago. You'd have been about 19 and you'd fetched a boyfriend home with you and he sat on the sofa and he said, this is really cool, you and your mum, your relationship with you and your mum. And I said, yeah, we get on well, we can pretty much talk about everything and we, we know a fair bit about each other. And you said, and we know things about the other that the other doesn't think we know. And I said, what do you mean? And you said no biggie mom. I've kissed girls. It's not about the gender, it's about the person. What do you think about the fact I'm now with a man? And that because I remember when I had a girlfriend and actually for a time thought I might be lesbian, you were quite upset by that yeah, and I found was. that hard to accept. So some of it is being so far away in Australia and we were having this conversation face to face, but you just came out with this, oh I need to tell you I'm lesbian and I did the classic No, you're not, Nicola. And I said, it's just a phase. That got you even more cross with me. You know, it's just a phase you're going through. I think because there were a time when I thought I might be, but I was married at the time and I thought, my God, I'm married and I'm a lesbian. I've got these, these lesbian friends who keep telling me, you need to jump, 
jumped to our side and I said, but mm. I'm not lesbian. I like men. I like relationships with men. And it's about who I meet and who I connect with. So, your Mum, would you identify as bisexual? Yes. Yeah. I'm actually pleasantly surprised by the fact you would identify as bisexual now. Why pleasantly? Do because, you know I mean? Not <laughs> because I didn't think you were open or comfortable with yourself, yeah. but I'm, I see that as a positive change in our culture that, that I you can, can say now it. say it and feel good about yeah. it. How many people are actually bisexual is difficult to know. There's very little research and what there is is often contradictory. <laughs> Dr. Kinsey, I read your report. Now I'm mad at all the women and I'm going to drag... Studies by the preeminent sexologist Alfred Kinsey back in the 40s and 50s found a significant number of people were neither 100% heterosexual nor 100% homosexual. The polling organisation YouGov used the Kinsey scale to measure how people in two countries, the UK and the United States, see their own sexuality. Ben Glanville heads up their fast turnaround research department. If we take the uh, UK results, we saw that uh, 72% of UK adults identify as completely heterosexual. 19% place themselves on a non-binary part of the scale and 4% classify themselves as completely homosexual on the scale. That means gay or lesbian. And what we found when we delve into the results further, we actually see that 49%, so around half of all um, 18 to 24 year olds identify as something other than completely heterosexual. The uh, US picture really mirrored the UK where we saw a much larger proportion of uh, younger respondents placing themselves on the non-binary part of the sexuality scale that was used. Um, Where it differed, though, which was interesting, uh, was that if you take the UK, you see um, around uh, 61% uh, agreeing that sexuality is a scale. When you pose the same question to a US audience, it's just 39% of people who agree with that. US respondents were much more likely than their UK counterparts uh, to believe that that people are either heterosexual or homosexual. By visibility, or should I say by invisibility, is one of the main barriers to feeling comfortable as a bisexual person. Quite frankly, there's hardly any mainstream coverage of bisexual people in society or media anywhere. Uh, all right, camera is rolling. Mm-hmm. Episode four, take 2D, Mark. So that's why in America... One bisexual man, writer and actor, Tim Manley, decided to do something about it. I don't think I realized how much I needed to hear a story about being bi, how alone I felt in this experience, until we made this show about a bisexual male character. Tim, do you feel that the media don't really understand bisexuality? (laughs) Yeah, I would say that it seems as though most people don't really understand bisexuality. And I can understand that because I didn't understand it myself uh, until I went through it, you know? I have never seen a character in any media who experiences attraction the way that I do. I actually believe that there are probably many more men who are bi and maybe don't even realize it because they've never seen a model of their experience reflected back to them. Tim's teamed up with his straight friend and filmmaker Nadje Letayod, and together they have created an online mini drama series about a bisexual man. It's called The Feels. I knew I really just wanted to work with Tim, and I'd seen his uh, one man show called Feelings. I'm a, a straight black man that grew up in like gang ridden Southern California, but somehow I felt so connected to everything he was saying. Tim and Nadje explain to us the thinking behind a couple of episodes one called Visibility and another entitled Binary. If I go on a date with a girl and I tell her I'm bi, she just thinks I'm gay. But if I go on a date with a guy and I tell him that I'm bi, he just thinks I'm definitely gay. Yeah, we're confusing people. Apparently. In Visibility, what we're showing here is a conversation between a bi man and a bi woman just talking honestly about their experiences being bi and the challenges that come with it. People will always define me a little bit by the person I'm standing next to. Not being seen, finding it very challenging to show this side of yourself. If I'm on the street and I'm with a woman, there's this whole part of me that you just don't really see. But if I'm with a guy, the same thing is true. 
I'd like to learn how to walk bisexually. I enjoy the date, but um, he says that he's bi. Binary is something that I felt very close to home because many people, for whatever reason, have mistaken me for being bisexual. I feel kind of ashamed to admit it, but I feel insecure about dating a man who's had sex with other men or who wants to have sex with other men because I feel like there's something essentially that I don't have, I can't offer him. I've heard from many straight women that they would really be incapable or wouldn't be comfortable dating a bisexual man and I've always thought that was incredibly confusing like I and and to realize that that's such a common notion out there is is, is was shocking and I thought we should address that So if you didn't know what it felt like to be bisexual you've probably got a bit more of an idea now Perhaps what we should all take from these stories is not to assume things about a person's sexuality They might not want to share their deeper feelings, but just listening and importantly not judging can go a long way to helping bisexual people gradually feel happy in their own skin. It's taken me a long time to understand and accept who I am, and if there'd been a few more listeners along the way, I'd have probably reached this destination much sooner. Just think how many more people are waiting for that non-judgmental open ear. You've been listening to Being Bisexual, with me, Nikki Hodgson. It was a Made in Manchester production for the BBC World Service. Yeah.